Welcome everyone to a new solo challenge of Brilliant Diamond! This week we are bringing along Palkia, one of the legendaries of Sinna, to solo battle with. Let's go over how I got a level 1 Palkia in the first place. Back in Pokemon Soul Silver, I traded in an Event Arceus to trigger the Sinjo Ruins. Once the storyline there is complete, you get an option of choosing a level 1 Palkia, Dialga, or Giratina. For this run, I chose Palkia, and then took the long trek from Soul Silver to Pokemon White to the Pokemon Home, and finally into Brilliant Diamond. Since it is a traded Pokemon, we will be dealing with obedience checks along the way, and I'll be completely straight with you. It nearly caused the failure of this run. Let's take a look though at those base stats. And what a difference between each other solo challenge we have had. Palkia's special attack is so much higher than attack. So the special route is once again the best way to go here. With those stats, Palkia can overwhelm most of the opposing forces we come across. As long as our level does not exceed the obedience check. Next up is the level up moves. And we will start with Scary Face and Water Pulse. Within 8 levels, we get Dragon's Breath. The level up list is actually extremely stacked this time, but we will never make it to Earth Power or Hydro Pump. The TM list for Palkia is way too long for our video, but I'm going to highlight just the main ones. Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Dragon Pulse, Shadow Claw, and Surf. These 6 TMs will be our driving force for the majority of the entire game. It's crazy to think that Togepi was extremely difficult to complete, but what does Palkia hold in store for us? Well, you can find out by hitting that subscribe and like button. The Palkia brought over from the Johto region is a bashful natured one. That means neutral stats with no hindering or beneficial this time. Those stats at just level 1 is already pretty darn strong. And we head off towards Jubilife City, but this time we skip over the school kids. We do not need work up on Palkia with just how crazy the stats are. But our rival appears for the first time. This time it's our sponsor Power A. Click the card in the top right for more information and use code Syndicale for 5% off any purchase. Starly is a two-shot for Water Pulse. This run, I decided to let the rival have Piplup, mainly for the typing similarities. It takes quite a few of the Water Pulses to take Piplup down since it's resisted to it, but so far, everything is going pretty smooth. Rorik is here to rock out. Palkia is over the threshold of the first obedience check. Each attack has a chance of doing nothing, putting itself to sleep, hurting itself, or actually attacking. As our level goes further and further away from the first threshold of level 10, that check becomes harder and harder to pass. Honestly, I was just passing time here since it's Rorik and we have a water type Pokemon with a water type attack. I mean, did you expect anything less from this? Mars happens to be up next, and it doesn't look like I'm leveling up as much as normal. And that's because I'm trying to keep my level as low as possible for the better chances of getting through with little resistance from Palkia. Mars' Pokemon really isn't able to handle much against Palkia. But should Palkia had decided to not listen, we would have been in a heap of trouble. Speaking of trouble, here she is. Gardenia is where I question if I should continue trying this run or falter. It was also at this point when the Togepi run began. Gardenia took 59 attempts and over 7 hours of frustration to get a 1 in a million win. All of the attempts were just due to Palkia not listening and being defeated by her 3 different Pokemon. And what I'm showing you here is only the successful run. Crazy enough, if even one turn was a failed attempt on Roserade, we would probably still not have this video up yet. With Gardenia's badge in tow, our Arbenian's level jumps to 30. And so we have a little bit of time where Palkia will obey. 
With that out of the way, it's Jupiter that gets to feel our wrath. This fight only takes three turns. The first to knock out Zubat, and the remaining two for the Skuntank. Sadly, we are quite a bit over leveled, and this will give us that edge to overwhelm the opposing side. This unfortunately holds true for our rival fight as well. Same thing here, except it takes four turns. One to knock out Starly, one for the Roselia, one for the Prim Club, and finally one for the Ponyta. Even though we are already overwhelming our opponents, we are about to add to that with new TMs from Velstone. We happen to pick up Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, and Ice Beam from here. The only attack we keep is Water Pulse, and this will carry us until we get Surf from Celestic Town. It's time for Maylene, and we have leveled over the threshold once again. It sucks that we need to defeat the next two leaders to get it raised to 50, but maybe Palkia won't be that terrible. Of course, right out of the gate, Palkia refuses to listen, and Metatite places a light screen up to reduce special attack damage. Once we hit with Water Pulse, it confuses the Metatite, and after several more turns of Palkia screwing around, the Metatite goes down. The next Pokemon, Palkia does the same thing and not obey, then confuses the Machoke. It then proceeded to knock itself out because of confusion. Don't you just love when that actually happens? Finally it is Lucario, who only cared about raising its stats and gave us a couple of turns to rein in the Palkia again to knock out Lucario. With our third badge in tow, we gain access to Munchlax in the underground. I catch one in order to get the leftovers and place that right onto Palkia. This will be its item for the remainder of the game. It's the return of the Wakester, and as long as Palkia obeys, we are golden here. The only time it actually does not obey is against Floatzel. But that was quickly dealt with as all three of Wake's Pokemon go down fairly easily. With his badge in tow, the level jumps to 50, and I'm here to tell you that obedience will no longer be a thing in this challenge. Palkia never makes it to 50 before Byron, and it is finally smooth sailing and no more choppy waters. All of that being finally behind us, we have the third Fible right with Power A. Remember, click that link in the top right and use code Syndicill for 5% off any purchase. Why does Endeavor always do so much damage? Pretty much, we have all of the weaknesses for our rival's Pokemon. Our special attack is so high at this point that each one goes down in one attack. Sadly, I kinda hate saying this, but most of our fights will end like this until the Elite Four now. Even going against Fantina, the fifth gym leader, we're not even level 40 yet, and we're able to one-shot most of her Pokemon. Thunder on the Drifloom, and then Surf on the Gengar knocks them out completely. Miss Magius is faster than Palkia, and does know one of our only weaknesses, Dazzling Gleam. It didn't even hit me until Fantina that Palkia is only weak to Dragon and Fairy-type attacks. Pretty crazy, isn't it? We have to deal with potion spamming, but eventually Miss Magius does go down for the 5th gym badge. Power A appears for the next to last time to remind you about Code Syndicate for 5% off any purchase! Sadly, Palkia is just faster than each of his Pokemon, and with every one of his weaknesses, it's just an easy trample and a definitive, overwhelming defeat. Byron is an awesome gym leader using Steel-type Pokemon. Bronzor doesn't stand a chance with Flamethrower though, but Steelix on the other hand wanted to prove a point. With that ability of Sturdy, it got an Earthquake off, and Quake did it to Palkia. Roughly three quarters of the HP gone due to a critical hit. Of course, you know how Byron does here. Potion spam due to Sturdy until all of them are used up, then it finally goes down. I'm actually not sure if Bastiodon would have gotten the kill with Stone Edge or not since it missed, but I was not sticking around to find out. 
With Byron's badge in our possession, the obedience check ranks up to level 70, and we are free for the rest of the game now. We will never hit this until the Elite Four. Thank goodness. While we go through these next two fights with Saturn and Mars, I'm going to take a little bit of time out here and thank you all for the kind words of encouragement behind these new series. It's been great having fun enjoying Pokemon in a different way again. Here's the thing, I've got a lot more challenges planned, and some that actually might take a couple of weeks or longer to actually complete. Now, during those runs, I will have backup runs just in case things kind of go hairy. But the main one I'm thinking of is going to take a while. Also, I have a Patreon set up if you want to help out with these challenges. There's a link in the cards on the top right of the video, and also a link in the description as well. Finally, we have the join button here on YouTube proper. By clicking that and paying a monthly fee, you gain access to emotes, loyalty badges, and a few other membership perks as well. But that's enough out of me though, and let's get back to the challenge with Candace. Since Snover does snow warning and makes it hail at the beginning, our leftovers are going to nullify that damage as we gain the HP back right after the hit. No issues here as it takes a whole four turns to knock out Candace. With our overpowered special attack, it was meant to be, plus having Flamethrower as their weakness doesn't really help them that much. Cyrus was not much of a threat either, unfortunately. Once again, Palkia is faster than his Pokemon, and each go down in one attack. Of course, it still doesn't help that we have all of his weaknesses. Palkia can just learn so many damn good attacks! It almost feels like we're using a competitive Palkia, but then again, it's a neutral nature. Saturn is yet another victim of the Taken Down Easily Club. It's crazy to think that we have not done any grinding at all in this game, and I've skipped quite a few trainers. In fact, I skipped the entire gym trainer lineup in Fantina's gym, and still, we are so overleveled right now. <sighs> it's these two again. I bring Starly in for this fray, but actually, Palkia is just going to be using Surf since it hits everything on the field. So once again, sorry Starly, but you're not going to make it past this fight. It only takes two turns crazy enough because of this. Mars and Jupiter is actually a really fun fight for me. We get to knock out their Pokemon as well as some of the rival Pokemon too. Palkia does get confused by one of the Bronzor, but we do shake it off and it causes us no harm. The next major thing to happen though was getting paralyzed by Perugly with Body Slam. Once again, it did not actually cause us any harm, and the Heracross from the rival used Brick Break to take care of the barriers, and both Golbats are down the next turn. I know I love using the Cyrus theme during this portion of the run, and it's just such an amazing theme. You only get to hear it twice in normal gameplay, and I love featuring it more. This time around, however, I chose to bring Insane in the Rain's rendition of this theme. If you want to go check out his music, link in the description below. As for the Cyrus fight, it's another wash and repeat. It takes one hit on most of his Pokemon with the exception being Gyarados. This due to the berry that it's holding, reducing super effective electric damage. It's crazy to think that this is normally the hardest part of the run before the Elite Four, but it's basically over in a flash. Dialga could have easily done massive damage to Palkia, but it, instead it relies on other attacks as well. Three turns and the box legendary is down. While on the way to Volkner, we do not face any additional trainers unless required in the path. I do this for the remainder of the run since Palkia is just so powerful. Here's a little bit more trivia for you. It took until this gym leader to finally get our friendship high on Palkia. Normally it's around Gardenia when our friendship starts to come into play, but not this time. Also, Vargnor takes about five turns to go down. This little, that little extra one is in there just due to Ambipom using Fake Out and forcing the flinch. His Pokemon go down in one attack. His Pokemon go down in one attack each as well. 
Now we have the final rival fight of the game. And the final time I get to tell you about how clicking that card in the top right takes you to the Power A website where you can use code Cinekill for 5% off your purchase. Star Raptor has Focus Sash, and it always takes two turns to knock out, but also gives us Rain Dance to have fun with. This will boost our water type damage by 50%. Rapid Ash still just cannot handle the rain, and goes down to bring out Snorlax. Snorlax takes two turns with its massively high special defense. Seriously, this thing is a special sponge. Crazy enough, the rain stops at just the right time to use Flamethrower at full power on Roserade and Heracross. Empoleon does try with Grass Knot since it's holding Quick Claw, but we overwhelm it and that's the end of the rival fight. Oh boy, here we are at the Elite Four. Not actually knowing if we would make it back at Gardenia's Gym, but alas, we make it. Eren will pose no problem here since we have Flamethrower, and Bugs just hate fire. The only one of his team that actually manages to stay alive longer than a turn is Vespiqueen. But the attack order doesn't even do that much, even for a critical hit. Not too bad for our first Elite Four member, but what about Bertha? So I actually got a little bit cocky here, and did not heal between fights. Quagsire does need two turns and does toxic us. We make it through three members of her turn and ultimately Palkia succumbs to the poison and faints. The last time we had an extra attempt was Gardenia and we only lost here due to poor planning and judgment. The second time around Quagsire decides to just earthquake instead of poisoning us. We then go on to Wishcash where we get the freeze on it and that will guarantee a knockout the next turn. Golem takes a bit longer just due to the sturdy ability once again, and then Hippowdon gets surfed on to take us to Flint. I knew going into Flint that I felt zero threat. I had all of his weaknesses. The main Pokemon to watch out for here was Lopunny since it did no Mirror Coat. Each of his other Pokemon fall to one attack, be it Surf or a Thunderbolt. Infernape still has a Focus Sash though, and fires off a close combat for decent damage. The trainer AI still has him use a full restore, even though it's a guaranteed knockout here for us. Lucian actually gave us a run for the ages here. It took three different attempts to finally get them down. The first attempt, since Mr. Mine put a light screen up, our damage is reduced significantly. And we make it to Medicham where we only do half health to it. But it hits us with a full powered high jump kick and it takes us down about 13 feet. On the second attempt, Alakazam fires off a future sight before getting knocked out. This will go off in two turns, and unfortunately in two turns, Girafferig stalls us long enough to get us knocked out by that future sight. At this point, we swap out Surf with Shadow Claw. Our physical attack is not as good, but it does a lot better for us. Due to that, Mime doesn't actually put the extra barriers up, and finally, we get to do full damage to everything. Shadow Claw does wonders against most of Lucian's team. We don't even get to deal with Alakazam this time. Girafferig does get a Trick Room up, but it's nothing that we can't handle. The final Pokemon is Bronzong, but it falls after hitting us with an Earthquake. Hello again, Cynthia. It's time to take that throne and rule over all of Sinnoh with Palkia by my side. We bring Surf back in place of Shadow Claw. I was feeling really good about the first run since all of her Pokemon were going down in basically one to three attacks and dealing very little damage back to Palkia. Then came Melodic. Melodic has mirror coats and loves using it. Unfortunately, Thunderbolt doesn't deal enough damage and we take a one shot from mirror coat. Next attempt, we make it to Garchomp, but we don't even stand a chance to his Dragon Claws. I'll be upfront with you. It took me seven attempts, mainly because of the Melodic. 
And on the final attempt, I actually swapped out Ice Beam for Dragon Pulse, since Garchomp has the Berry that reduces super effective ice damage. We also leveled up Palkia to 72 in order to have a better shot at taking her down. Finally, Garchomp leaves Palkia at 1 HP due to friendship, and a Dragon Pulse in its face wins us the day to become Champions of Sinnoh. What a wild ride this challenge was, from not being sure if we could actually make it past the second gym, to blasting through the remainder of the game. In game time, it was not even 9 hours, but I'd say it took about 13 total with most of that being mental breakdowns from trying to get past Gardenia. We come back next week with a new solo challenge, this time featuring a Johto Pokemon like no other. I'll catch you next time.